Lost Girl Found by Leah Vassoff and Laura De Luca. If you had to choose to live without eyes or ears, what would you choose? It was a simple enough question that can spark up a conversation. Like a conversation you have when sitting around with a group of friends as you try to get to know each other better. But that question never sparked a conversation with Pony. It was the last question she asked her mother. The next day, she had to make her own choice between life or death. And that was the start of many big decisions that Pony had to make from that day forward. Pony awoke that night to sounds of bombs, people screaming, and her mother telling her to run. Without questions, that was just what she did. She ran so fast that she convinced herself that her feet were no longer touching the earth till she jumped into the forbidden Kenyetti River. Pony valued her mother's opinion, and that is why she threatened boys who showed her any interest and worked hard to stay in school. Stay in school, her mother once told her. Never marry early or let your husband beat you. This was not an uncommon occurrence in her village. If a husband did not beat his wife, it was assumed that he did not love her enough. However, Pony had much greater concerns in her life because she was now without her family and walking with a group of people in search of refuge. The days turned into weeks in the hot, dry African landscape, and her body whittled into nothing. Finding water and food was more important than the fact that her feet were swollen and her tongue was cracked from dehydration. Even as people in her group dropped dead of starvation and lay in mines, she had to make the choice to stay alive and give up. And she never gave up. Had Pony known that she would never see her family again if she had ran, would she still have decided to run? There was not an easy answer to the question, but she cannot look back now. She had to keep going. She had to keep going until they found the refugee camp Kakuma. When she arrived at Kakuma, things were not the paradise she imagined. She found herself in a camp with thousands of displaced people in a land of nothingness. There were no trees to sit under, and the only shade was what their shadows provided. Hunger loomed over the people as children barely clung to life and the fear of being raped led girls to stay in groups. Being a minor, she was fostered out to a woman who lost her family. She is strict and beats Pony and eventually has a plan for an arranged marriage for Pony in return of a dowry. Pony was a clever girl and most certainly a brave one. One day, she snuck out of a camp and right into the front doors of the UN building. There she met a woman who told her of a nun in Nairobi who helps women like Pony. She promised to find Pony in her camp and take her to the nun. But the UN woman never arrived. Pony could not stay, for her time to marry was quickly approaching and she needed to find this nun. With no promise that the nun would even help her or that she would find her, she still made the decision to find this nun. And that is just what she did. For the first time in years, Pony had something work out for her benefit. She had earned her place with the nun at the home and was grateful. Before long, Pony was back in school and the opportunity came for her to go to America. Until the phone rang. It was her cousin and her mother was still alive. A flood of emotions rolled over Pony as she is now faced with one more big decision. Will Pony decide to go to America or will she stay behind to be with her mother?